but I do want to go back to the whole using Rust. Like, why was it Rust that that it, the lang uh, why is Rust the language that you guys were drawn to? What is the value in this language? And you know, just go with that, I guess. Yeah, sure. Well, if we're starting uh, from scratch for for any project. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't really have anything to bind us to any other programming language. And in that kind of free field, it's very hard to rule out Rust as the, the language to start with. Okay. It is statically typed, which is important for preventing errors that happen all the time in dynamic programming. We love it's duck the reason why Duck type is great, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's the reason why Pop Shell is using TypeScript, so that we can add a layer of static typing on top of a dynamic language. Mm -hmm. Because it just means if you pass the wrong object, the compiler complains. You don't have the whole system crash, you know, three three weeks after the user boots into a session because something was wrong yeah. in yeah. one specific tiny little use case uh, because of a mistake, which happens all the time in Python and JavaScript, where oops, at that one point in that one you know rare case, I pass something in value error, you know. Where did that come from? Let me just wrap the whole thing in try catch, and mm -hmm. and hopefully everything's fine, uh, <laughs> right? Try catch solves everything. Try catch the whole entire yep, yep, yep. piece of code. Main function. We just try nest catch. the try catches down. Like yeah, exactly. Every function has a try catch. It's yep. uh. Yep. So yeah, well that's it, it, it's easy to write dynamic program, uh, dynamically typed programs because you don't have to worry about the types matching. Mm -hmm. But when type <clears throat> matching is required, you run into cases where in JavaScript, mm -hmm. you have things interpret themselves as true or false in a completely unpredictable way, you would think. And you have to like learn the entire ethos of the creator of JavaScript to figure out why square brackets are true and, and curly brackets are false, and it's like, uh, I don't want to make fun of JavaScript, but I th I feel like out of all the programming languages I could make fun of, uh, that's probably the main no. one. Just My because so many things in it don't make any sense to me. <laughs> so yeah, static typing was important, and then you then you have to rule out. Well, why not do it in C? Why not do it in C plus mm plus? -hmm. And so another thing about Rust is it, it's not really just like about memory safety, memory safety comes out of the borrow checking system. Mm -hmm. And the borrow checking system is kind of an extension of static typing, where now the typing system is also evaluating, have you mutably aliased uh, an object when you shouldn't have? Mm -hmm. And uh, this extension, this, this borrow checker, uh, r just rules out a ton of other bugs. And another thing is the non-existence of null. Null doesn't exist in Rust uh, oh. at all. You have to use the option type, which is a, a strong type. It either has an, a variant sum or a variant none. You can also use a result type, which has a variant OK and a variant error. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to match the variant. You have to handle both cases. You can't just have a function that takes a pointer, and the pointer could be null or could not, and then the programmer could forget to check for null. Every oh. function that takes a, a, a pointer to something is usually done through a borrow. And the borrow is statically checked by the compiler to always be a valid pointer. And if you don't want it to be a valid pointer, you wrap, wrap it in an option type, which then the programmer has to actually unwrap that option type. They have to handle both cases. In C and C++, Often the mechanism by which you pass errors back is to return negative one. Well, what if negative one needs to be a real thing? How does the user of the function know by just looking at the function if the error type is zero, negative one, 100? They don't know. They just know it returns int. What does int mean? Mm -hmm. And in C++, pointers are, are used all over the place, and it's very easy to, to pass in pointers when they're already being used. For example, iterating over an array while you're removing elements from the array. In Rust, you are not allowed to do this unless you do it the correct way. Mm -hmm. In C++, it is very easy to get seg faults because you've removed an element, 
at the same time that you're iterating an array. Yep, yep. So these are all, all things that a stronger type system prevents. So I'm, I'm, I'm very into types, and I would have gotten into Haskell if I had a PhD in applied mathematics, but I don't. So I'm not into Haskell. Uh, so I got into Rust, which is like the next best thing. Mm -hmm. As you were going through those exa uh, those examples, I was thinking back to my software engineering classes, and I was I was thinking back on every single time I did yeah. exactly what you were saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's not so. And and the apologists will say, "Well, you just have to get better." Yeah. You just have to get better. Get and I I I don't think that's an answer because people don't. There is a limit to to the ability to understand a system. And when you drop somebody into the Linux kernel and it has, you know, 6 million lines of code or whatever it is at now, you can't expect them to, to understand every other part that they're interacting with. Well, it's, it's and not... all those parts have to work for the whole system to not have bugs. It's not just that. Like, if you can get the computer to do that checking for you, like, why would you bother doing it yourself? Like, Go, right. just, you know, go wash your clothes by hand. Why would you use a washing machine? Like, no point in that. Like, you can just do it manually. Oh, well, washing machines, don't you know that they have the 5G signals that <laughs> communicate with your COVID implant and blah, blah, blah? Look, there are some really crazy no, people like, out there. You were joking about the 5G thing, but I guarantee there are actually washing machines that are like... There have but, to be washing machines with 5G. Yeah, there are so many sure, smart... Though. Why does anybody need a smart washing machine? I, I don't know, know, but they're they are there. They exist. A smart refrigerator. Yep. Why? So it. it can fail. So it can just So it can play Doom. There's a software bug and then all your food rots because the software bug turned off the refrigerator. It's the same reason why cars may have a ton of of things going through the entertainment system, mm -hmm. but usually they try to segment out a few of the critical things like do the brakes work through the entertainment system? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe on a Tesla. I was going to say, maybe on a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> but probably not on most cars. Uh, we got a little sidetrack there. Uh, we're talking about Rust. Um, right, on the topic of Rust. So you guys are going with the Iced Toolkit. I don't know anything about Rust GUI toolkits, but what were the other options at the time you guys were considering? It is a very nascent field, and there is a lot of interest in... in uh, creating things that actually work. And when I got into it, there was absolutely no text rendering being done in Rust. It was all it was all wrapping other libraries mm -hmm. at best. And at worst, it was basically rendering text without any handling of complex uh, text items like shaping uh, or like anti-aliasing or things like that. And so ICE was doing it that way. Mm -hmm. But so was everyone else. Uh, accessibility is something that we're still working on building into LibCosmic. So it's it was really hard to come in and evaluate any of these because so many things would have to be done in-house for it to be finished. Uh, the first evaluation was, do we want to use a pre-existing toolkit not written in Rust, like GTK, Qt? Do we want to use one of those? And uh, we eventually decided not to, and it was a very tough decision. On the GTK front, it was primarily due to the attitudes of the GTK developers towards how we were doing theming on Pop! OS. Mm -hmm. And although technically it's probably still possible to theme Libadueta and to theme GTK4, mm -hmm. they have made it tougher on purpose, and that does not give us confidence in the future mm -hmm. of, of the platform. For Qt, our, our main issue with Qt was our, our difficulty to integrate it with Rust because we still wanted to write the business level code that controls the UI, the, the GUI in, uh, in Rust. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to integrate that as tightly as possible. And GTK RS is really good. It, it was easy to use the GTK wrappers for, for Rust. Mm -hmm. um, but we just didn't trust the platform. And, and for Qt, it was difficult to use the wrappers for Rust. So that led us to the thing, well, if, if we'd have to work on either of these either way, either we'd have to trust, we'd have to bring ourselves to trust GTK to, to continue working for us, mm -hmm. and our use cases 
definitely strange because we will be loading custom custom theming into the application based on the the uh, the user's config files, mm -hmm. and that was that was something that we weren't sure was going to last in GTK. Uh, and then um, yeah, on the Qt side, we we would have to do work to improve their bindings for Rust. Let's look at the work we have to do for the Rust toolkits. So that led yeah. us to uh, several different toolkits, Iced and Slint being the major ones. And I mm -hmm. still recommend everyone to take a look at Slint. Okay. I think for a lot of applications, Slint is a better choice. Iced integrates directly into Rust. Slint has a, a layout uh, language. Mm -hmm. And I think depending on your preferences, one is going to be easier than the other. And for, for us, we decided to go with Iced. Uh, at the time, it seemed to be a more flexible option, but mm -hmm. Slint has done a lot of work recently to improve. So now it's kind of, if I was going to recommend a toolkit, <laughs> it would be either Iced or Slint. And we had to flip a coin and decide to go with one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we, we went with Iced and... and Did you guys uh, do any like, had... prototyping early on just to mess oh, around yeah. with the languages? We did prototyping. Oh, we did prototyping in GTK, uh, and and we did prototyping in Iced and in Slint, and and the the uh, ability to wrap Iced in another library was particularly impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, just the way that it exposes things and it's composable at at a code level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think it makes it a little more difficult to use at a higher level. Uh, for someone who wants to draw up a, a design in a design editor, mm -hmm. something like Glade or, or Qt Creator or Qt, Qt Creator, um, which I've used Qt Creator a lot. I used to do a ton of C++ stuff. Uh, so, so anybody from the C++ world who's mad about the stuff I say, just realize I used to not understand just like you. But now I know the glory of Rust. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I, I, I'm aware of those, and I think Slint, they provide like a website editor mm -hmm. uh, to mock things up, and and uh, they they did some work to integrate our cosmic theme, and that was recently something they published, and it looks really great. Uh, wrapping it into, into Rust and creating custom widgets the way we wanted to do, and it just iced was something that appealed to to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It also follows an Elm-like structure, uh, which a number of people on my team were interested in. Uh, we had been experimenting with Realm 4, which is a wrapper for GTK 4 that, ex that has an Elm-like structure as well. Mm -hmm. And Iced was a little cleaner in terms of following this model because it, it was able to, to separate things out that using GTK would be difficult to separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end, we had a lot of work to put into Iced. Uh, for example, I had to spend about a month just re-implementing like, all of the pieces of shit about text layout that, that nobody thinks about but have to work before you have a working toolkit. Mm -hmm. And so that became <clears throat> Cosmic Text. And now Cosmic Text is integrated into Iced. Mm -hmm. And Slint is planning integration of Cosmic Text as well. OK, well. So that was something created by System76, the, the first pure Rust shaping and rendering solution. It integrates some other libraries that were very important. Uh, there, is, there is a Rust port of, uh, I forget the shaping library's name now. Uh, I can I can find it very quickly. I'll just go to the Cosmic Text GitHub page. Easy. Because <clears throat> I don't want to throw out that we did everything. It was an integration of multiple different efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, it did require a lot of System76 work to get, to get everything working. Uh... Shaping. Who does shaping? Shaping is provided by Rusty Buzz. It is Rusty Buzz, yes. Render is provided by Swash. Right. And Rusty Buzz is itself a Rust port of Harf Buzz, which is the ah. name I was looking for. Um, <clears throat> and that, uh, that solution basically, Swash, Swash was able to render everything, Rusty Buzz was able to shape everything. But combining the two 
and actually doing layout is an incredibly complicated task that no one had really attempted yet mm -hmm. in Rust. And so a lot of Rust libraries were either not handling international text correctly, or they were um, they were wrapping very large C libraries to do the same thing. Right, right. And you can use GTK and just do that and GTK RS, but then the majority of your code is actually C and you're using Pango and Cairo and Harfbuzz and the free type and those C libraries to, to uh, handle shaping and layout. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and font fallback is another thing that people usually don't think about, but is something completely in, in, integrated into cosmic text and not from an external library. So, you have to scan the system for all fonts, and you have to have a list of fonts that are preferred for each like uh, script. Right. Like if you have Hindu script, you need to have a set of fonts for every operating system that are preferred, and you need to find which font has the right character. And you need to do this for every single character. So it ends up adding up quite a lot and being a very difficult performance problem. So caching the results of that and ensuring that that every single group of characters that could be ligatured together got the right font uh, is a lot of the parts of cosmic text. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so in the end, we were able to add international text handling to Iced. Slint is going to, going to have it as well using cosmic text. Accessibility is something we're working on. And those are things we had to take on because we wanted to do a Rust toolkit. It was a very nascent field as I said, still is in many ways. So whilst your goal is improving ice feet, like the, the use of cosmic, it is having a, a wider effect on the general rust GUI space. Yeah. Cosmic text is, is now being evaluated by a ton of different toolkits if it's not already being used by them. So not just iced and slint, but also bevy, the mm -hmm. game engine is looking at integrating cosmic text. I think e GUI, if I remember correctly, there's like two choices. If you're making a toolkit, you either wrap another toolkit mm -hmm. or you have to do text layout in the language that you're in and, uh, and different, uh, rust solutions do it different ways. So iced was interesting to me because it wasn't wrapping any other toolkit. Mm -hmm. It was handling, uh, the rendering all inside of rust. So it was using WGPU and going directly to, um, to the GPU for every operating system. Uh, and, and I, uh, helped to, to, uh, fix up this, uh, crate called soft buffer mm -hmm. so that, uh, ice could provide software rendering on every single major operating system, including redox. So now ice works, uh, completely hundred percent on redox. And so does slint because, uh, there's a slint team member who, who is basically tasked with ensuring that uh, Slint is working with, with a whole bunch of different operating systems, and Redox is one of them. And providing the cosmic theme for Slint is also one of them. So we'd be probably, if I, eh, I mean, I don't want to throw this out there and, and be wrong. I could be wrong, mm -hmm. but we might be the first uh, desktop environment where you have multiple toolkits that implement the, the UX style of that desktop environment. Mm. Uh, so I can't think of another one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, no, I, I was saying I can't think of another one. You have KDE and you have Qt. You have GTK and GNOME. Yeah. You have uh, you have XFCE and and GTK. GTK three. <laughs> GTK three, yeah, right. which I mean I I prefer in some ways. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it's usually a one-to-one -one ratio, and now we're talking about multiple different, different ones, and they're all going to load the cosmic theme. And the I, the concept is that we want to have uh, a a overall set of of GUI libraries that any Rust GUI developer can use, mm -hmm. and they can be assured that the whole entire stack is Rust. So yeah. all the way from from their code down through the toolkit, down through the rendering libraries to finally the, the interface with the operating system. And that's where it cuts off. Unless they're on Redux, then it keeps going all the way. 